Hello, welcome to my shop again. Uh, I've got a friend that's helped me out. Uh, he happens to be a uh, avid fisherman, and he is heading a group that's uh, trying to help protect the brook trout here in a local Boardman River. And so I'm going to do this uh, for him. Now, there's been a change of plans. This uh, was going to be a two-part series because I lost some video, but uh, now I found it, so this is going to be three parts. The first part was the outside. The second part was the bowl and finishing the outside, and now we're going to carve the little brookie, the shallow relief carving. So stay tuned. A little public service announcement here um, Starbond is a good company that supplies glue uh, if you're involved with a turning club uh, we buy this in case quantities and get a discount from Starbond for the club and then resell it back to our members so it's not only a great glue we can get a good deal on it we got have this all sanded now and a nice I guess we got lucky here look at the grain character nice and balanced just what we were after when we removed the the wood water between centers uh, my friend is a uh, a trout uh, a fisherman and uh, is a president of a group that's uh, working to uh, save the brook trout here on a local river and so I'm going to carve that trout in the, uh, the piece here. The hardest part, I think, about this carving, shallow relief carving, I've, I've done this many times over the years. Uh, I think the hardest part, part that takes the longest is just getting the, the scale right and, and drawing it on here, uh, getting some of the detail that you want so that you can carve it. So, uh, and use a, a sharp pencil and uh, make my way around this. The carving part is really easy if you've uh, done a good job at putting all this uh, detail in uh, from the pattern. So take your time and do this accurately. I have the outside now outline. Now I have to put some internal features. So I'm just going to lay my pattern on there and uh, put my pencil in place. This is sanded to 600. It's kind of slippery. Put my pencil in place where the tip of the eye is and move my pattern away. And where the back of the eye is. Okay, so I can make a an eye here. And where the top of the eyebrow is. And then where the back of the eyebrow is, back here. Okay, now the inside of the mouth has got to be right here at the corner, and comes up here like that, it's almost a straight line from here to here. There's a gill here. And a bit of a, a jaw under here. Okay. Alright, now it goes down to where the other side of the gill is right here. This fur, first uh, 
bird that I'm using, and I'm using a, a Fordham, but uh, it could be a Dremel or any kind of rotary tool. Um, when I talk about carving, though, I guess I uh, let's d define that a bit. I'm not carving with a knife and chisels. I'm always using rotary tools. So uh, this first bit is a uh, it's a tra trapezoidal shape. It's uh, uh, got a sharper angle than 90 degrees at the end, so that it uh, the angle of it allows me to uh, get in there. Here I'm just uh, outlining the eye socket. On the back of the eye. Around the eyebrow. I use four, five, six, I don't know, lots of different burrs. This is a finer point one here to get the little detail. In there, I use uh, Christmas tree shape ones, square ones, round ones, all kinds. Uh, this one here is an important one. This is what I'm going to use to undercut and make a shadow line all the way around the outside of it or where I want a, a sharper detail. I don't know, it's hard to see in the camera work is not good here. There's a good shot of it. It's a steep angled so I can undercut that area and make a shadow line. Here the uh, little brookie is uh, jumping out of the water and so there's ripples of water that I'm uh, making here with a, a stiff hard drum sander and uh, we'll soften this up later with other sanding discs. Now I've got the the outline of the fish carved and uh, undercut a little bit here so that there's a little shadow line. But now I need to smooth out the area between the low undercut into the vessel so that the fish looks proud of it and the contour of the vessel doesn't get interrupted. I don't want to have a, a notch there. I want to have the the bowl slope right into the fish without any transition. So I'm going to use my drill press and a sanding disc to take some of that wood away and smooth that into a nice smooth contour. This is important when we're using a sanding carver, uh, using sand, sanding discs, sanding drums, that we want to have our, our ear protection on and our dust protection on. Uh, make sure we're not breathing that dust. Okay, here again I'm, I'm carving with a sanding disc. Uh, coarse grit, I think this is about a 120 grit sanding disc on a drill press. Uh, one of the rules that I have, I try to, whenever I possible, have one element stationary. Either the uh, drill press is stationary and I bring the wood to it, or I have the wood clamped down uh, in the vise or the lathe and bring sanding discs to it. So, uh, trying to grind away that, that hump there between the fish and the, the contour of the rest of the vessel, and then... Uh, uh, go north, south, east, west many times. Okay, when I'm doing that, I want to make sure that I leave this edge alone and I leave that edge alone so that uh, I don't disturb the shape, but I'm just trying to smooth it in between the two. Then the broad brush of the sanding disc is going to take any of the little tool marks left over from my carving. It's going to float across the, the little bumps. I go the other direction. The other direction, the north, south, and then the east, west, that takes the ripples off from 
I'm getting so that I can't even feel a little transition about their little bump right here. Yeah, mushing on the pad pretty hard there. You're not actually yep, cutting like with the edge of the disc. Here, I want to be careful, don't touch the contour of the uh, bowl shape, the rim of the bowl there, but uh, just catch that disc inside the, the shadow line that I created with the, the little Fordham uh, sharper tool so that that uh, light uh, kind of has a, a place to shadow in there. Okay, next I'm going to use a, a padded drum sander. Uh, this takes just regular sandpaper and uh, I can cut this uh, rim with a nice clean uh, cut there to get down into a, a relatively tight corner to clean up uh, the surface again. Now I'm going to work on the the shape of the fish itself. So I'm going to just touch this outside line a little bit, just trying to curve that fish into it and into the little fin here and just make a little bit of a roundedness to it. It's already got a little bit of rounded shape from from the, the, the vessel shape, but I want to just touch the, the edge all the way around here to uh, soften that a little bit so it's not a square edge there. Down in here, it turns into water, so there's ripples of, of water down in here. Soften that. Soften around the nose a little bit. I'm just touching the fish here, make, making careful I, I don't touch the of the background surface and make any notches in that. So I need to uh, sand down through the grits after I get done using the rotary sandpaper and uh, need to just make sure that there's no fuzzy spots of uh, grain torn out from the coarse sandpaper. Uh, when I'm sanding a an edge like this, I use the the folded edge of the sandpaper so that I'm not sanding the detail, but I'm sanding the surface. Now the sandpaper gets dull. Well, let's use the other side. Okay, sandpaper gets dull. So we make a new fresh edge. That edge is not doesn't have any abrasive on it. It's different than this edge. Okay. So now I can go back and sand that surface without sanding the detail. There's another little detail right here. His jawline. So I'm going to get my sandpaper down in that corner. This whole process of carving this fish and start to finish with all of the finished sanding and everything, it probably took me well, not much more than an hour. So this is pretty easy. Give it a try. You'll have fun with it. Okay, we got her done. Let's get a little bit of a close-up here for you. Uh, and uh, you know, the lights aren't great here, but uh, I'll have probably put a still at the end so that you can see a little bit better uh, but uh, thanks for watching and uh, don't forget to support our sponsors Doug Thompson tool and uh, Mike Hunter tools uh, I in fact I have a new sponsor just coming on board a star bond 
CA glue. Um, I've been using it for decades. So check that out and uh, subscribe uh, on your way out. If you're not a subscriber, uh, you'll get a, uh, a notice from YouTube when I post new videos. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned. Uh, we'll see you again next time.